Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing fantastic. And today we have another subscription box. This one comes to us from Barrel and Blade. But before we get into it, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure you the notification bell so you do get notified when I upload new content. And with that, friends, let's do it. All right, so we got barrel and blade. If you are interested in this particular box, I will have a link to them down in the description box of this video. They are a monthly subscription service that has two levels of boxes for you to choose from if you are so interested. And yes, we get the level two box, which is the more expensive of the two. So let's see. And right on top here, we got our card, which again, I greatly appreciate getting things like this with the boxes. This says this is Operation 65 Gun and Gear Cache. Uh, whether you are more into handguns or gear, a few attributes are shared between the two. They hate dirt and they hate moisture. This month, we are proud to feature some great gear to help keep your guns and gear in mission ready condition. Also, we packed in some big value, which I know you guys will love that. And there's the breakdown of the level one and level two box, which we will get to. Uh, this is another big box. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to do like I normally do, set it on the floor and I will just pull this stuff out and bring it up here. Okay. So the level one box, I think runs around 50 a month and the level two box runs around a hundred a month. The first thing here is some kind of bag that it says it's called a bone dry. It's a handgun 2.0 bag. So what this has advanced moisture removal material. Okay. So this thing, it says it stores and protects farms from moisture, holds five magazines and accessories. It's military grade nylon. All right. But my question is, my question is, it obviously has some type of desiccate material in it. Okay, we've got a compartment here because you can feel the desiccate material, you know, in like it's stitched into, into the, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the pad of the bag. And then over here on this side, you have all your, you got pretty decently spaced holder here. And then you got, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. You can put actual magazines in here. That would work. And you have this little divider here to, you know, keep it segregated from your actual, you know, firearm. Okay, so that's cool. But how do you, how do you recharge the thing? Because obviously if you... If you use it and it works, right, you're going to have to, I would assume you would have to recharge it because if, if there's stuff in here that's absorbing moisture, how do you then recharge it? Okay, it says leave the bag open in the sun to dry and recharge. Okay, so good thing is the bag is black. It will, it will you know, absorb the sunlight. So that's good. So yeah, okay, so all you do to recharge this thing, I would assume, just open it up and leave it outside in direct sunlight. Let the sun heat it up and do its thing, and it will recharge the desk kit material. So that that's interesting. And yeah, this thing could. Uh, it looks like it could support really large firearms, like my, like my 40, my 44 Magnum with the long barrel would probably go in here, as well as my. Uh, I got a raging a Taurus raging judge with the long barrel and it, I think it would probably go in here. So yeah, this is interesting, you know, because down here where I live, yeah, humidity is definitely a problem because we get, you know, it's, it's, you know, really bad down here. It's like you walk outside in the summer and you're in a sauna, but yeah, it's got some very, very sturdily made handles here. You can see all the, all the cross stitching. There's kind of like an orangish color and it does have a place here for some kind of, patch so yeah and we got some and we do got some loops back here 
So this, theoretically, all of the, let's see, all of the seat mounts for your vehicle that I've been getting in these subscription boxes, technically I could mount this to it and then keep a firearm in here with some magazines and stuff and yeah, they would be dry and this is actually really cool. I've never seen anything like this before. So that's an that's interesting first item. And then we got a Gerber because this is barrel and blade. So I guess this is going to serve as one of our blades. This is an arm bar slim drive multi-tool. It has four tools. has a frame lock, a bottle opener. Let's see, what does it say? And this is also another thing that I've never seen before from Gerber. And I do have quite a bit of Gerber knives and, and, and tools and stuff. It says the handle is anodized aluminum steel with burnt bronze accents. Okay. I don't see no burnt bronze stuff, but okay. Fair enough. It has a key ring. It has a bottle opener. It has aluminum scales. It has a plain edge knife. It has apparently a fold-out that has a two-sided bit driver across and a flat. Okay. And as you can tell, this thing is not that big. It's, it's very small. Very definitely, Definitely very compact. You know, it's not very big. So, yeah. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I've got a... I've got a bunch of multi-tools from different companies that are at, at, you know, varying price points. And I want to actually do a video com of a comparison between all these multi-tools from, like, cheap to, you know, like, Leatherman-type expensive. And, uh, yeah, I, I can probably throw this little guy in the mix, even though it doesn't really have a whole lot of multi-tool functionality other than uh, it looks like three things. But still, this would be something cool. And, you know, I don't have a problem with Gerber stuff. It, it is less expensive. So, like I said, if you if you can kind of meter your expectation and what you're doing with the tools, then, you know, the longevity definitely is there. So that's just something to keep in mind. All right, we got a pistol a pistol gun sock. Okay, I like these things, I will say. I like these because I don't have cases for all my guns, and a lot of times I'm taking multiple guns to my range when I train. And as a matter of fact, I have a sock that looks just like this right here. This was one of the one of the like rifle socks, and so I just had it sitting up there. So yeah, so now I've got one for a pistol. It says it's four inches wide and 14 inches long, and of course, you know they're they're very stretchy. And yeah, you just stretch them out, you know, put your gun in there, and there you go. And it's good because, you know, it keeps the gun protected, uh, keeps your firearm protected, and, you know, from getting beat around and everything. And, and yeah, I, I really do like these things. So this is, a, this is another, another welcome addition because it's a gun sock and I don't have one. I have one now, though. All right. We've got a headlamp. And if you guys watch my videos, you know I love my headlamps and my flashlights. And this is one, for, I don't know why I was in this bag. But uh, it has a browning symbol there, so I'm assuming it's a browning because it doesn't say browning anywhere. Well, it says it right there on the inside in the little thing. Let's see, we got, it's a range LED headlamp, 175 lumen. It says it'll do 12 hours on a low setting, and it gives you one Energizer AA battery. Has a wide angle lens. See, I, I'm assuming it's just a, like a dual mode, like a low and a high. But it doesn't tell me what. Does it? Yes. Okay, the low, wow, the low is really low. It puts out 22 lumens on low, and it'll do that at, they say it'll throw 10 meters, which is decent, you know, 10 meters for 12 hours. And then it says it'll it'll do 175 lumens, and the throw distance on that is 28 meters, and it will do that for four hours. That's not bad on one AAA battery. I will say that's not bad. I'll have to take it out and test it, though. It does say it is water-resistant. It is impact-resistant. Okay, they say it's impact-resistant to one meter. So basically like three feet. You know, you can drop it, and it obviously it says it won't damage it. So yeah, this is this is and it's very small. Like it's it's a very small headlamp. So that means if it's small with only one battery, uh, one AA battery, it means it's going to be really light. And a lot of times, you know, with headlamps, people don't think, you know, they they want these ones that have the big, 
you know, the, the big, long batteries in them, which is fine because, you know, these things are super bright. But one thing to also that I don't hear a lot of people talking about with headlamps is people that actually use them. I use headlamps. And I'm going to tell you, having those ones with the big, the big batteries and the, the big anodized, like, aluminum frames, they're heavy. Besides the weight, you got one of these that puts out a serious ton of light, them, them LED emitters, they get hot. And having it right here on your head, getting hot, you feel it. I don't care what nobody says. And, and, and you don't hear a lot of people talk about kind of that aspect of the LED headlamps. Is that how hot they get? Because, you know, these things are putting out, they're putting out a lot of juice. So they're going to get hot because that's going to be one of the byproducts of, of putting out the, of the, uh, the illumination is going to be the heat. So, you know, that's just something to keep in mind. <laughs> Speaking of humidity, here we go. We got a humidity gauge for a safe. And currently in my safe, I don't have one of these gauges. Uh, I really don't need it because I have a heat rod. And if you have a safe, like I said, especially down here, it's so humid. And technically anywhere. If, you know, you, in your safe, you want to have something like a heat rod. I know there's friends of mine that I know that have safes, and they have the big, the big, like, the uh, the desiccate boxes, you know, the things that just absorb moisture out of the air, and then they take them out, like, I think, like, every month or every month and a half, and they take the thing out, and then there's a process of putting it in your, in your oven at a certain temperature for so many hours to, you know, to basically recharge it. But with a heat, with a heat rod... All it is is think of like a warmer in a fish tank because that's to me what it looks like. It's just a little rod that has, you know, little legs that it sits on and I put it at the very back of my safe and it just emits heat. And that heat heats, it, it, it creates a differential between the interior temperature of my safe versus the outside environment so that that air kind of creates a positive force and it keeps all the humidity out of the safe. But this is something good, you know, to keep kind of keep tabs on where the humidity is inside of your particular safe or, or whatever. So yeah, this is this is something really it's really useful. I really don't need it, but you know, you might. And if you would have got this box, you would have received this. So there you go. And from the same company, actually, this company lockdown, they also made the uh, the pistol the pistol sock too. I don't remember if that's who I don't. I don't think that's where that gun sock came from. I think it came from somebody else. But, speaking of, we have a lockdown silica gel bag. It weighs 450 grams. It has protection for up to 33 cubic feet. Okay. 33 cubic feet. I can't remember how big my safe is, but my safe my safe's pretty big. I've, I've, got, a, I've got a big boy. Yeah. I think, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I can't remember. But it says this one little bag will, will do that. And let's see, so you've got, okay, so to charge or to recharge it, you put it, you put this thing in the oven, you know, on a cookie sheet. It says set the oven for 220 to 240, and then leave it in there for three to four hours. Then take it out, let it cool for about an hour, and then you're good to go. It, it will be ready to absorb some moisture. So yeah. So yeah, if you guys, you know, bought this box and, and you know, you had a safe and yeah, they really hooked you up with all the stuff. Okay, and the last thing, actually, if even if you didn't have a safe, they actually give you a safe. They give you a mobile vault. So let's, uh, let's check this thing out and see what we got. And I will say this, I don't have one of, one of these things either. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I have sort of mixed feelings about these little, these little safes, you know. And I understand like people that have them, like in their house, you know, to, you know, if they got kids and stuff like that, you know, you want to have a way for the firearms to be accessible to you, but obviously not to them. I get it and I understand it, but at the same time. You know, the way I think about that is I just teach my children about firearms, you know. And like my oldest, you know, has been to the range. You know, she's, she's fired, you know, she, she's fired a weapon. And, uh, you know, the, the thing is to have firearms not be, not be like a, not be taboo, 
you know, not be this this thing that no, 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 you can't touch this or you know, blah blah blah. But if you just teach them, you know, what the firearms are about, give them familiarity with them, then it take it removes that. Then the chil- then my children won't have the temptation of saying, hey, it's this thing, you know, and nobody's around, so let me go mess with it, you know. So that's just my opinion, because you you remove, you just you remove the mystique, you know, surrounding any and really anything, you know, like you can apply that to almost literally anything, because the biggest thing that makes children want to do stuff like that is obviously not having exposure to it. So not saying everything, obviously adult stuff is big no no, but you know, my oldest daughter is old enough, so she's been to the range, and yeah, so. This is they give you a they give you a cool lock there for your gun and yeah this thing is it seems to be big enough that a standard you know a large frame semi auto would definitely fit in here some of my bigger guns like bigger my, my definitely my bigger revolvers will not fit in this but definitely any any of your SIGs your Glocks you know your CZs you know whatever they'll go in here they should go in here no problem. And it seems like it's it's thick enough that yeah you're not going to have any problem. Now if you if you started you know if you've got a gun and you've you got a lot of crazy accessories on it, if you got stuff on the top and then you got like extended mags, you, you could run into a problem. But standard standard fare should have a problem. And yeah, so yeah, so in this box, if you did not have a safe, now obviously for this you don't need the desiccant and you don't need the the humidity meter there but but yeah but this is definitely a all in one kind of hooking you up kind of box and for somebody and one of the things I always try to keep in mind too with these boxes you know is the people that are going to subscribe to them if you're going to subscribe to a box called barrel and blade let's just face it you got some firearms that's just you know that's just the way I feel about it so yeah so all this stuff you know, would have been, you know, I don't think it would have been wasted, but that's the beauty of the comment section. You guys can go down there and tell me what you guys think about it, but we're going to get into the card here because they do give me some values. Okay, on the level one box, you would have got that for 50 bucks. You would have got the headlamp, 27 bucks. 27 bucks, okay. Again, my frame of reference for this is going to be like a big box retailer. So I can see I can see around 20 20 27ish bucks. Okay, the Nighthawk mobile lock box. Was that the name of this company, Nighthawk? No. It says it says Sherlock Security Company. Let's see. But this is a this is a lock box. Okay, so this could have been a substitution with maybe just a different brand. But anyway, they say that this mobile lot box has a $47 value. Now remember, we're in this box for $50 bucks at the level 1. So you got $47 for this. We got this uh, pistol sock uh, for 6 bucks. Yeah, I would say 6 bucks. That's pretty good. And the silica gel bag, right? For the 12 bucks. Okay, so we got 12 bucks here. All right, so this right here, let's see if I can get it all into the to the frame. This would be what you would have been rocking with the $50 box. All this stuff right here. 27, 47, 6 and 12, you'd have got for 50 bucks. All right. Again, you can let me know in the comment section what you how you feel about that if you think that 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 was a good deal. All right. So you step up to the level 2 box, which is 100 bucks. You're going to add the handgun case, the bone dry case. Let's see, this is 58 bucks. 58 bucks for this. Okay. Our little humidity gauge here, 12 bucks. Okay. And the Gerber arm bar, $40. Yo. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't see, I can't see this. I guarantee you, man, if you Google this or Amazon this, because you can buy this off Amazon, I already know it. I already know you can get this off Amazon. And there, I can't see this thing going for 40 bucks. 
Okay, out of everything that, that we've looked at here so far, especially going through the prices, I'm going to say, I'm going to call shenanigans on 40 bucks. 40 bucks for that. I'm going to call shenanigans on that. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think that's, I don't think that's, I don't think that's right. Okay, but that's, that's what we got for this month's Barrel and Blade, Operation Number 65, Gun and Gear Cash. And I'm going to tell you, the theme of the box, they definitely hit the target. They gave us stuff, you know, and they threw in the blade. Barrel and blade. What do you guys think about this month's box? Let me know down in the comment section down below. I look forward to hearing from you. As always, that's all I got. So just let me know in the comment section down below. I'll throw up a subscription button next video. And yeah, let me know down there in the comment section what you guys think about this box. All this stuff. I, I, you know, the, the thing about it, like this bag... This is something I, I probably never would have sought out to buy. You know, and, and I'll just, time will tell. Time will tell if this is something that I will actually use or not use. But I'm going to tell you this. When I generally go to the range, uh, I'm in a hurry. And I'm just like throwing stuff into my truck to go. So I don't do a whole lot of packing or organizing when I go. But that's another story. Thank you for hanging out from this long. I greatly appreciate you. And we will see you next time. Peace.